video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create this cool 3D design in Adobe Dimension, and we're gonna play around and have some fun. So the other week I was playing around with the dimension and I created this design and also this one as well. I was playing around and today we're gonna to create this and I feel like it's such a good program to get started into the 3D world and you can create so many cool materials and effects and I feel like it's a lot of fun. So jump into dimension and then what you have is you've got your basic field of view and you can see this is like the 3D plane and you can see it's got like a floor and it can go in multiple directions. You've got the Z, the Y, and the X axis, which is really cool. You've also got your tools on the left-hand side. Some of the tools are very similar to Illustrator and Photoshop, but the way it works and moves is a bit different. So the first three shortcut keys is you've got one is for like rotation, two is for like moving the screen, and then three is like to zoom in and out basically and one is rotate as you can see there. So those are the three shortcut keys you need to basically know for now. But what we can do is start to play around. So I'm gonna drag and drop a basic shape and just drop it in like that. I can also use my mouse wheel to zoom in, which is really fun. I can press V for the selection tool to select my little cube, uh, not cube, uh, my ball here, which is interesting. And what I can actually do is if you press V, you'll see you get the axis up. You can actually scale and move. So if I click and drag, that's going to move my ball. I can drag the red one to move it this way and the blue one to move it on the other axis, as you can see there. If I want to scale, I can press S as the shortcut key. And if I do it from the top, you can see it's going to scale and become a pencil or a pen or something. If I drag it from this section here, it's going to scale it like this. But overall, you want to hold shift. That's how you keep the proportions, basically. So if I zoom out and hold shift while I'm scaling it, make sure that it's on scale. So you can see it changes there. The difference, S and V is different. If I hold shift, it's going to scale the ball in the proportions um, and symmetrically. So that's really cool. Those are the main tools right now, which is really cool. So I want to play around and start to create something and see what we can do. You can also use spacebar as well to if you need to get the hand tool up. But typically I use the the number one, two, and three shortcut keys. So I've got that. I'm gonna drag out a tube here. I'm gonna scale it up just like this. And I can move it like this. Another cool thing with a dimension is that you can actually add different views. So on the top right, you can see I've got like camera bookmark. So if I click this, I can save a view. So I can call this maybe home. If I create another view, maybe I want like a bird's eye view like this. I can create another view by clicking the top right little icon here and then calling it, yeah, I can call it view two, press enter. So now when I click on these views, it's going to just shift. And there's also a shortcut key as well, um, which can help you shift that. Right now, I'm trying to remember if, what it is. You can see Control B will switch back to the home view. If you press Control B, back to the default one that you set. So that's amazing. So right now, um, I think that's really cool. You can also get heaps of other items like, like packaging and stuff. So for example, I can drop this like food can in here. You know what I mean? Maybe I want like a food can popping out. If I want to rotate objects, I press R to rotate. And I can, you know, play around with that. Maybe there's like a thing sticking out of this. <laughs> I'm just playing around. And obviously this is this program is not as like in depth as like Cinema 4D or Blender. It just gets the job done, you know what I mean? Beautiful. All right, cool. So we can also search assets as well and it will use Adobe's um, stock, Adobe stock, which is really awesome. So I could search up, let's just search up bin or something. Um, or you can search up car. Okay, like cart popped up. So it's got business cards there, which is awesome. You can also um, search as well if you need to search for more assets, but they give you some default ones as well. But you can click browse Adobe stock at the bottom of the list there. 
you can find some free 3, 3D ones. You just need to find the filters. Maybe if you just click standard content, it should show you the free ones, but you just gotta do your own research here and find ones that are free, but it's got heaps of objects, like so many objects, it's pretty insane. But we're just gonna use the default for today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to play around. So I'm gonna add a nice metal material. So once you've played around with shapes, you've got like standard materials like glass, you've got mat, you've got woods, things like walnut, you've got brass and metals and other things. There's also called substance materials. So these ones are crafted by artists, so people in the community. So for example, we have like a geometric metal bronze one. So all you do is drag and drop it onto the can. I can also drag this one onto this can maybe like this. And then also for the bottom one, I can play around. Maybe I, d I want like glass or something. I can drop glass like that. I'm just going to press three and zoom out. I want to just rotate, see what it's looking like. I think that's awesome. I need to scale this up a little bit and I need to move it. And over time, I feel like this program will get better. Awesome, I think it's looking like an igloo right now, <laughs> which is awesome. So the cool thing about this is actually you can add some lighting as well. So after you've done the materials, you can actually add some lighting. So the basic ones is like circle lights, square light, three point or a sun. And then you've got environment lights. You can see on the left here examples. So if I click, you can see the lighting will probably start to shift as you can see there. So I can left click once and it's gonna show me different lighting effects basically. Um, but obviously we can play around and customize it to the way we want it So usually I'll just play around with like three point or circle light And on my right hand side, I can increase the intensity of the light I can decrease the height so you can see the height there So if I want the shadow like a long shadow or a short shadow, I can use the light I can rotate it I can decrease the intensity so not too bright maybe just a little bit I can make it like have like a yellow, yellowy tint if I want. But for example, yellow, make it just a tiny bit yellow. And what else? Go back to the light. You can also change it here. You can increase the size of it, as you can see there. Make it a big light source or a small one. So you've got so many things you can play around with. I like to add the edge softness as well. And you can click on camera and change the camera view, field of view. You can play around with all these other things as well, like all the parameters and the exact details, but we're not gonna do that. So once you're sort of happy with like what you have here, you can click, left click on this little square button, which is basically like the render preview. So you can click that or press the back slash button on your keyboard. And I can see I'm getting this cool render, which is looking pretty cool. So I can just untick that and I'm just gonna add some more um, detail. So what we can actually do, we can actually add background images. So for example, if I go to my unsplash folder, for example, I can drop this ocean in like this and make it look like it's floating or something, right? I can also add like a plane. So sometimes you wanna add like a plane like this. I'm gonna scale it so, you know, maybe it's like on the bottom there and on this plane I could add different materials like whatever I want glass or ice maybe this is like ice or something um, you know I'm just playing around really with this effect and then I'm gonna just quickly render preview and see what it's gonna look like so maybe it's like a floating I don't know it can be interpreted in any way so we can drop images in the background which is cool we can actually drop some of these other images. So for example, maybe I want like a, a beach background. I can like drop a beach. I can turn off the preview, delete this one. And so maybe we want like this nice beach. Um, and maybe I want to play with it. The, maybe the light is like too intense. So I'll drop the light a bit. Maybe rotate it a bit more. Maybe from this side. Maybe increase the height. And maybe make the size a little bit different. I'm gonna render it and let's see what we create. Awesome, look how awesome that looks. Like look, it looks so 3D, it looks super cool. You can't move when you're in the render. So, you know, you gotta 
play around. And the cool thing is, I if I want to change my view, I can go back to the other view I had last time and I can render from here. Maybe I want to render it from like this angle. What does it look like? Obviously, it looks a bit weird because it's um, on a weird angle. But I can also rotate and play around with some other angles and see what that is looking like. Amazing. So that's looking pretty cool. I think I'll probably get rid of this can for now because it's looking ugly. But I'm going to hold shift and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. So if I hold alt and shift and drag, it should duplicate it like that. So similar to basically Illustrator and other and Photoshop basically. So maybe I want that. Maybe I want to zoom out a little bit. Maybe I want to move it like this. And maybe I want to change the materials. So I can even change the light again. So for example, maybe we've got sunlight. And every time you add like a, a light source, it goes on the right hand side. So make sure you just click delete on the ones you don't want. You can delete. If there's no light, you'll have nothing basically. Uh, so I can add a forest there and then I'm just going to I'm going to render preview, see what that looks like. Beautiful. So that looks interesting. I don't like the light. So I'm going to just change it. And I might just play around with some other textures here. So I'm going to drop, uh, let's drop brass on this one. And maybe marble on the other one. So for me, it's all about experimentation. Cool. I like the glass in this one. It looks like a lot more like vibrant and like clear for some reason. So cool. I I'm kind of liking that. I feel like for the background, we could probably, you know, make it a bit dimmer or crop it. We can make a color. If we just want like a background color, we can do like that by clicking on the background. So you can click no background or background. Or you can click this button here and change it to an image or change it to a color. So now we can play around with all these like cool colors. Maybe you want to do like a reddish, orangey. And we'll see what happens. Cool. So I'm loving that. I think that's awesome. I will just play around, drop the maybe the intensity of the lights. Rotate it a little bit. I can also colorize. If I want to add color on top of everything. So I can add like a color or a temperature. So depending on what you want to do basically. So maybe make it a bit cooler. And boom, I think that's really awesome. I could probably play around with the environmental light for now, but for now, I think that is looking fine. And then once you're happy with that, what you can do is you can go to file and click export, and then you can click scene, and you can export it as like a 3D object or a global object. Or what you can do is actually you can save that render out. It's gonna be awesome. So let me just go over here and click on the render tab at the top left. If you click render, you can make save it as a PSD, which is basically a Photoshop file. Or you can save it as a PNG, and I can save it to where this folder here. You can change the quality to high, medium, or, or low. Um, I typically do medium. For this tutorial, I want it to go fast, so you just want to make sure that you know your computer is fast. And I can call it like orange, whatever. In the current view, you can change views, but I'm gonna click render. Awesome. Now, once it's done, they will tell you when it's done and you get a notification. Then I'm gonna sort of go to my folder and I'm gonna double click. And now I've got this simple PNG that I can use for a project. I can drop it into Photoshop, do whatever I want with it. And that's how you use Adobe Dimension. So thanks so much for watching this tutorial. Smash the like button for the algorithm and subscribe to my channel for more design tutorials and business of design content. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll chat to you next time.